Emily Johnson, a short story written by me, Srijoni Ghosh. As a new girl in the college, Emily thought her first work was to make friends with Alex and Della, the best students of her standard. She also did get all necessary opportunities, like on her very first day, Professor Williams himself asked her to sit beside them, etc. They also liked her as she was cheerful and witty at the same time. In the hostel too, Emily shared Della's room and Alex stayed in the room just beside. Emily was the youngest and the kindest among the trio. Della was an intelligent girl and was very popular among the students because of her bossy nature. Although she wasn't as pretty as Emily, she was the one who handled the situations when things went wrong in the college. What made Alex different from the others was his sharp observation and his vast knowledge. What was common among the three was that they were highly adventurous and extremely courageous. One day, as they got up from bed, they were surprised to see a crowd of cameramen, reporters, students and teachers in the college campus. There were so many people in that crowd that they did not bother to get inside it. They instead asked a senior student about what had happened. I am also unaware of what exactly has happened, but I heard from my friends that all the new books, copies and magazines that were to be distributed today are missing. And our professor assumes it to be a theft replied the senior boy as he went away. Everyone in the college were worried. When there are so many gold medals and trophies present in the storehouse, why will the thief or thieves only take those study materials? Alex questioned while sipping coffee in the breakfast. Maybe the thief has lots of interest in books chuckled Emily and the three of them roared with laughter. Suddenly, Della suggested, Why don't we try to find the thief out and solve the case? It's obviously a good idea, Della. But how will we? They have kept no signs for moving on, exclaimed Alex. Della explained, Well, let me first go to the storehouse and check the place out. I'll inform if I get any signs with may help. Then C asked, Shall you go with me, Emily? Yeah, why not? Said Emily as they grabbed each other's hands and ran down the staircase. Alex kept on thinking about the issue. Suddenly, after a couple of minutes, the two girls came back with a big beam on their faces. Before Alex could ask something, Della spoke out. We have seen a number of footsteps leading out from the back door of the storehouse. Though they are not so clear, I think we can find out where it leads because the footmarks are clearly visible in the snow. Okay. I am going to see the measurement of the food step. You two better get ready for the economics class and do make sure that my books are ready too. I will just go and come, said Alex and he took on his overcoat and rushed to the storehouse. He saw that the measurement of the shoes were just of the same size as his. He got an idea that the thief or thieves were of the same age as them. 
When the boring economics class was going on, he sent a note to Emily and Della informing them that they will be following the footsteps in the evening and he has a unique plan to escape from the hostel slightly. As the class ended, Della asked, Well, now kindly tell us what your unique plan is. During the afternoon, in the basketball session, we will get out of the campus by climbing over the barrier, said Alex. And you probably know the consequences if the security guard catches us, said Emily gloomily. Alex replied, I have an idea for that too. We will just give him some money and tell him that he will get more if he keeps it a secret. That's going to be great, guys. I can't wait for the thrilling adventure, exclaimed an excited Della. And I'll give the money too, as I have plenty of it currently, continued Della. And I'll do the rest of the minor works, like arranging for a few torches and making some food for Tiffin, said Emily who was indeed an expert cook. After a long time of waiting with bated breath, at last the basketball period came and they quickly separated themselves from the other students who were moving on in a queue. It was even easier as they were standing at the end. They somehow managed to climb over the barrier and reach the other side. But Della was about to fall down at a time. Had Emily and Alex not caught hold of her, she would have been injured severely. It was snowing outside, so they needed to put on all their warm clothes. Then Alex went to the security guard and whispered something into his ears. Della and Emily stood far away. It seemed as if the gatekeeper nodded his head as Alex handed over two pounds to him and came running to them. Then they went to the back side of the college and followed the footsteps. The footsteps led them through the lonely avenue street and stopped at a crossing. Then. They followed the track made by a vehicle in the snowy path. I'm tired. Please hold here for some time, said Emily as she took out the water bottle from her backpack. As she was drinking water, Alex whispered to Della, I don't understand why Emily has become so less interested and boring. Della whispered, Maybe as she was not feeling well today at noon, she told me that her head was aching badly during lunch. As it slowly became darker and lonelier, Della took the torch and began to lead the team. Suddenly, Alex took out binoculars from his pocket, put those in front of his eyes and exclaimed in wonder, Yup! I can see a beam of light over there. Probably it is coming from a village as there can be no town over there. Move on Della and follow us Emily. But when he turned back, he realized that Emily was missing. Where well, Della? He said and shouted out, Emily, Emily, where are you? But alas, she was nowhere to be found amongst the desolate land of snow. Della too shouted her name out for a few times, but the name Emily went on echoing there, making the atmosphere more thrilling and eerie. Everything seems mysterious, remarked a thoughtful Alex. And then they again moved on through the snow. It was absolutely a deserted land and they were in the hope of reaching the area from where the beam of light was coming. When they were just a few feet away from the light, 
They understood that it was neither a village nor a residential area. It was a huge building or rather a kind of huge apartment. The tracks of the vehicle ended there. Then they cautiously went up the staircases of the building. There was a huge hall before them and to their utter surprise, there sat hundreds of children, big and small, with books in their hands. They could also spot the teacher sitting in their middle. The teacher was female, of course, but they could not see her face as it was covered with a black cloth. The students are very poor, aren't they? Just have a look on their clothes, exclaimed Della as she felt terribly sorry for them. Let's go in and find out what's happening at the middle of night in this desolate area, whispered Alex. They were approaching towards the teacher and all the children stared at them. The teacher said, Oh, who are you? You seem terribly tired. Would you like to have a cup of coffee? Nella said with a warm smile. No, thanks. We are two friends who have lost our way while going to home. By the way, may we know what's going on here and where actually are we? Della asked impatiently. She also wanted to know about the identity of the woman. Both of them wanted to take a look at her face too. Well, you can say it as an orphanage type building where poor little orphan children are taught for free, said the woman. Alex answered, It is indeed a good job to teach them, ma'am. May we know something about you? You seem to be a jolly interesting person, said Della. Why don't you interview me? Asked the woman with a groan of laughter mixed with the sadness inside. Okay, let me do that then, said an excited Alex. Alex, what's your name? Teacher, I shall tell you at last. Alex, why have you kept your mouth covered? Teacher, so that nobody understands who I am. Alex, why did you choose this lonely place and night time for teaching? Teacher, because fewer people can come here. I feel afraid always. You do a pretty good work. So why are you afraid? Actually, I also belong to a poor family. I do not have the money to afford for all these books. But before dying, my grandpa told me to do something for the development of the poor children. As I was good in studies, I decided to teach the poor children. But I really do not have the money to afford for the costly books. That is why I... The woman paused. What? Alex urged to move on. I needed to steal books and copies from schools and colleges. She told, as silent tears rolled down her cheeks, but none noticed because of the cloth. After a few moments of pin drop silence, Alex and Della said to the woman everything, why they had come, those footsteps, and then the tracks of a vehicle, the sudden missing of their friend Emily, and everything else. Sadly, the teacher said, I am really sorry. I think I should quit all this. I can't help people by performing a sin. Oh no, what will happen to these children then? Della said. We, I mean Alex and I, will provide you with a little amount of money every month by gathering from our college friends. Very kind of you said the touched teacher. Okay, will you please tell us your name now? As we need to leave for finding out our lost friend. 
Alex said. Well, my name is Emily Johnson. She said as she unwrapped the black cloth from her face. The End <laughs>